Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jade. If you're new here, very warm welcome. And if you want to have a lovely subscribe, as always come back. Thank you so much for coming back. So today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a balloon sizer. So this is handy if you don't do balloons professionally, so you don't really want to fork out a fortune on getting a pre-made one. It's also handy just because you can simply make up whatever size balloon that you want to do. Super simple, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through what items you're going to be needing to make it, and then I'm going to show you step by step which way to make it. If you did find this video handy, then do please give it a big thumbs up as it really helps me. And if you haven't already, then hit that subscribe button to stick around, I would love to have you here. But I'm just going to jump right into the video and get started. So first I'll talk you through what you're going to need. I'm going to start off with the cardboard. You're going to need a scrap piece of cardboard and you can judge the size based on the circle that you need to cut out. So I'm only going to make a seven and a half inch one, so therefore this one's fine. You then need some sanding paper, you need a tape measure or a ruler, you need a compass. What I'll do is I'll leave a link to this compass in the description box below. I just picked this one up on eBay, I think it's about £1.80 or something like that. You need a sharpened pencil, a sanding knife. I've got some, this is just what I had laying around, so I've just got some gloss spray paint which I picked up in the pound shop. So you can use any kind of spray paint or some acrylic paint. You need a pair of sharp scissors and I prefer to cut out using a soft surface so I've just got an old cushion that I'm going to use but if you want to you can use like um, a hard surface if you find that easier. So I'm going to start off by showing you how to use your compass. Now you're going to need to have a pencil that's already sharpened. Mine could do with a little bit more sharpening but I can't find my sharpener. On your compass you will have this circle and you're going to put your pencil through the circle and then you're going to make sure that the tip of your pencil and the sharp point of it on the compass meets up. Once that does you need to tighten this little wheel and that will hold your pencil in place so it can't fall out. Once that's done, that's all set up and ready to go. I apologise in advance if you can hear my puppy barking. Um, I have put him away because if not he will be buying all my bits. Um, once that's in place, you can just open and close your compass like this. Now I'm going to show you what to do on the cardboard and that way you'll know how much you need to open and close this by. So because I am making a 7.5 inch circle, I'm going to get my tape measure and I'm going to set it to 7.5 inches. Um, you can do this with a ruler if you want to, but I can't find my ruler either. So I'm going to be using my tape measure. So as you can see there, I've set it to seven and a half inches. You're then going to take your ruler or your tape measure and you're going to place it. Now, what you want to do with the cardboard is where I've got an oblong one, you might have a square one. If you do have a rectangle one, um, I'm going to use one side of it so that I can cut a strip here. Because what I tend to do is I tend to hang this part like the whole part over the side of a table and then I put something heavy on the edge to keep it in place. So I'm going to leave like a bit of a thick strip there that gives me a space to put something heavy on. So I'm going to work to one edge of my rectangle. So I'm going to take my seven and a half inch tape measure and I'm just going to draw a line. Let me grab my pencil. And I'm just going to draw a line from start to finish. Just like that, if you can see that. And then I'm going to do a cross. So where it looks like the middle of the line, I'm just going to take my tape measure again and draw another seven and a half inches. So once you finish drawing your lines, you'll have a plus sign looking like this. What you then need to do is you need to take the sharp point on your compass and put it in the middle of your cross. And then you stretch your pencil out to the edge of the line, so to the top of the line that you marked, as you can see that's where mine is. Now you need to place it back onto the flat surface and you're going to just hold your compass in place in the middle with one hand. Right, so I'm going to try and hold this with one hand and do it so it might be a little bit difficult but you basically need to keep your sharp point in the middle and then you're going to slowly pull your pencil around to connect the edges of your circle. Ignore that line that I done before switching the camera view over. So for the purpose of this video I've just gone over it in felt tip but what you want to have is a finished circle looking nice and even and what you can do to check that it's even is you can take your ruler or your tape measure and basically just measure each side to side anywhere in the circle should be the measurement the same measurement that you've done so for me it's seven and a half inches going all around that way you'll know your circle is nice and even. So for the next step you're going to need to use a Stanley knife you need to make sure that the blade is nice and sharp. There's no point trying to use a dull one as it will make it very hard and difficult. You're not gonna get a straight finish to it um, or a smooth finish, I say. If you're underage, then do please seek help from an adult. Don't do this yourself. So like I said in the beginning, I prefer to do it on a soft surface. Um, this is an old cushion, so it doesn't matter if it got any tear or anything like that, but don't use something obviously that is of value to you because it could possibly ruin it. Um, and you're gonna take your Stanley knife. Now, I wouldn't go exactly 
on the line that you've drawn because if it goes wobbly in any way you're going to end up having a bigger circle what i would do is i'd try to go literally just right beneath it so it's almost on but not quite um this bit can be a bit tricky but what you're going to do is you're just going to press quite firmly and just drag your stanley knife around if you want to then hold the stanley knife quite still and move your paper that way you can kind of keep this hand firm and then this hand just moves it slowly around helping you keep the line i'm going to go ahead and do that now i'm not going to talk because i will probably go wonky if i do talk Before I go all the way around, I'm just going to check that it's coming out the other side, which if I show you, where are we? There we go. You can see it's just about coming through, so I'll be able to press it out. Also, you don't want to have your standing knife too far out because you're going to lack control then. You want to keep it nice and kind of short, that way you can have full control when you're moving it. If you feel that you're going wonky at any point, just take your knife back up and out and then just refocus yourself going back down. Right, so before I push mine out, I'm going to show you if I can. I'm going to try and get it to focus. Can you see just how close I've gone to the line there? So I've almost basically gone on it, but I've just sat there. Another reason why this doesn't matter is because once we push this through, we're actually going to sand it down. So it doesn't matter if you're not exactly on the line, because by the time we sand it, it will just make it that little bit closer to the actual measurement that you plan to have. And then slowly, what you can do is go from underneath and just push it out. Don't force it too much because you don't want to rip or bend your cardboard. But you can just nice and slowly push it out. If any of it is particularly stuck, and it didn't cut properly then just go ahead back with your standing knife like this bit here just go back over it and loosen it up that way or go from behind if you want and see which bit's stuck there we go and you just cut it off so now what we're going to do is we are going to cut this maybe about 10 10 centimeters of a border just so that no matter what I use that's heavy can still fit on there sometimes I just use whatever's to hand um so I'm going to go in with my scissors and I'm just going to cut that off so now we have got the template to our balloon sizer all that's left for us to do is we are going to I'm going to go in closer and show you um can you see the edges are still quite not smooth should I say so and if I show you on that back side you'll see even more so there so what we're going to do is we're going to take our sandpaper um now you don't have to go out your way and buy sandpaper if you've already got it in the house so it's not like it has to be a specific gradient this one is a medium sandpaper if I remember rightly and that's just simply because I had it at home laying around um I then fold it over just so I've got more of a grip on it because it's quite a big piece if you've got a smaller piece that's fine and then you're just going to take your circle and you are just going to literally smooth it over not too hard once you've gone over all the inside of the circle you can just do the top edges both back and front just to get any stray cardboard that could be hanging on off right now you should feel and you should have a really smooth circle so nothing that the balloon's going to get caught on or anything to pop your balloon now if you want to this can be your finished product um nothing wrong with it at all but i'm gonna for the sake of the video again i'm just gonna go a bit extra and i'm gonna go ahead and spray it now I wouldn't recommend using like a normal like kids paint or anything like that because you can find that one the feel of it's not that nice it dries quite matte but it can also like crack and flake so I think you can use acrylic paint on cardboard which should be fine um or you can use spray paint so I'm going to go ahead like I said this is a white gloss finish um might not be the greatest of finishes but it was laying around in my cupboard so I'm going to just make use of it so I'm going to go ahead and spray that now and then after that we should have our finished product So your finished 
product should look something like this obviously whatever color you've chosen to do it or if you've chosen to leave it plain if you want to feel free to jazz it up that is entirely up to you if you have the time to do that do that because you have got this far in the video um, I will share with you as well another way to size your balloons because you deserve it as you've watched all the video If you don't want to make one of these but you want to size your balloons What you want to do is you want to get two chairs to so say these my hands are the chairs um, You're going to put them on the floor obviously you're going to take your tape measure and take all your ruler Measure out the gap between the chairs like back to back so the seat bits will be on that side Measure out the gap between both backs and just hold them there in place So therefore if I've got a nine inch gap between those chairs all you have to do now is just pop your balloon in and out of that little gap and there you go you've got another balloon size of that doesn't require any faffing about and it's completely free you just need two chairs to do it so that's a little tip for you there if you guys have enjoyed this video do please give it a big thumbs up it helps show youtube that you're enjoying my content and that you're finding it useful if there's anything else i can help you with then let me know in the comment box down below i'll be sure to help and make a video on it if i know how to do so myself um let me know if you have any questions or anything like that i know sometimes i'm a bit slow at replying but i do eventually get there Thank you so much for watching guys. If you haven't already, do please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you stick around. And until the next video, take care and thank you so much for watching again. Bye.